Hi, everyone. Welcome to this Mantra Breathing. We're so happy to have you with us today. And the theme of the week and what we've been focused on is Bali. Um, our Bali quest is soon to be coming up in December. So we've been giving a lot of energy, attention to this. We have some people signed up and um, we're looking that maybe there are a few more people who uh, are sitting in this mantra breathing today who are meant to come with us. So uh, think about it. And uh, that's December 3rd to the 13th. So we're going to talk about Bali. And I even have some slides that uh, I want to show you. Now, I sent out the little video we made. You should have had that in some WhatsApp uh, message. Um, it'd be nice to watch that. Even if you're not coming to Bali, it's very inspiring. Uh, Bali is one of the most spiritually charged up spots on the planet, we feel. And it's not just, uh, you know, kind of our opinion. We've been there every year, um, not counting the pandemic, of course, since 2010. So every year in December, we go and take a group and we got to know the people there where we stay is so beautiful in these villas outside of Ubud. And we've just literally fallen in love with Bali. So there's like India, and Bali, and those are like our two main spiritual places of pilgrimage. Um, and now we've added this Colorado ashram, Babaji's ashram in the United States. So those are our three quests. And we're hoping to reinstate Iceland back in to get some wet rebirthing going up there. Um, and a friend of ours just went up there last week. And so we're, we're looking into reinstating that. But okay, so now this is about Bali, and Sandra has a few things to say. <laughs> yeah, well, Bali changed my life completely. The first time I went there, I was completely blown away. I just couldn't believe a place like that existed. I mean, it's so beautiful, and the people are so holy. Everybody is so holy, and they have ceremonies so often, uh, spiritual ceremonies where the whole family goes together. Now, every family relates to seven different temples. They have one, of course, in their house, in their yard, in the district, in the town, in the district, and then they have the final big Divine Mother Temple. But they use these temples, all of them. <laughs> they would not ever let something just sit there as a relic. That's a real thing for them. And every morning, the family gets together and they sit down and they make a puja, they make um, offerings and they put them in a little basket and then they take this little basket to work with them and then of course every workplace has an altar and you always see them honoring the altar all the time throughout the day at the workplace so not only at home do they have everything holy also at their workplace everything is holy and um, the people are so sweet and kind and holy and you know, there's no crying and there's no homeless people so it kind of blows your mind to see something like that you know that a place like that can really exist and uh, it's totally peaceful and they tend to work out their traumas on stage in a drama dance <laughs> so they don't have any dramas at home uh, maybe marcus will talk about the dance. yeah well i just want to uh show you some things and let me just uh share a screen here um yeah you're gonna find this interesting. So this is one of the masks. Can you all see that? Yeah, this is one of the masks that they make in the Balinese dance and it's a costume. Um, yeah, so. Uh, That's how they shake out the ego. <laughs> and this is another character. And they have these characters in these dances and the dances are like showing us kind of our inner demons and they work out that whole drama on stage so people don't have to go through it in their relationships right their their relationships are totally peaceful and totally harmonious and then they work out all their stuff on stage and this is a mask maker oh. you can see his studio where he's carved all these different masks right he's a master carver yeah so we bought a couple of masks from him 
and he's really an artist. You know, his his masks are very high quality. Yeah. Yeah, they have a lot of characters with a lot of teeth. <laughs> and uh, these are like the the masks they use in the dance to kind of uh uh ward off evil spirits, you know. So, but they're so beautiful these masks. This is the goddess. I think that's Saraswati. Yeah. And many of them are very happy. You know, these characters are very happy masks. Here's another goddess. And there are some some of the other masks. Yeah. Ah, this is one of my favorite. I might I might bring this one home with me this year. Sandra thinks it's too much, but I keep the masks in my bathroom. So I have a Balinese mask collection in my bathroom. <laughs> The men's bath. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, oh, that's Ganesh. Nice. That's quite beautiful, Ganesh. Yeah, I like that blue guy with the big teeth. <laughs> yeah, and there's some more of his masks. And this is Bisaki Temple. You know the uh, Divine Mother Temple on Mount Agung, and there's seven different levels. I think this is like level number uh, three or four, and. There's the priest making offerings, and we we recite our divine mother names at the right time when he's making his offerings. Yeah, and just wonderful wood carvers. The Balinese are incredible carvers, and this is also up at the Basaki Temple. These are steps. You know, there's different tiers, different levels at the temple that you have to go up and in. Yeah. Yeah, and that gives you an idea of the height of the thing. That's about two two tiers up, but it goes to seven different levels. And at the top of the Basaki, you'd think there'd be some elaborate structure, but it's just a grove of bamboo with nothing at, at level number seven. It's just space. <laughs> just space. So the higher you go, the more space you you get in touch with. You know, and uh, one of the things the Divine Mother honors is is this uh, elemental, our elemental reality, earth, air, fire, water, and space. And that's what a lot of the rituals are designed to honor. And when we do the fire ceremony, that's what we're honoring. Mm -hmm. Earth, air, fire, water, and space. Those are the the elements of the Divine Mother. And this is our driver, a gung. He is like a special person. He always brings the right offerings and he's just a super, a very enlightened soul. And uh, we see him every year when we go, a gung. Yeah. And this is a little boy that came with us on the India Quest last year. His parents, uh, actually adopted him when he was a baby. Uh, one of their friends found him just sort of abandoned, right? And they took him to these friends of ours, this husband and, and wife, and said, oh, we found this baby, can you take him in? And they'd already raised six kids, right? They said, ah, no problem, just give him to us. So they've raised this boy and he's very special. He was a high priest in several lifetimes. Yeah, and, and some clairvoyants said he was uh, he was very high in past lives uh, as a priest. So they're kind of grooming him to be uh, a priest. Yeah. And this is one of the temples at Basaki. This uh, the the man on the right with the the, the stick, and the lady on uh, his his right, between uh, him and me, uh, is his wife. And there's the boy. And then there's a couple of priests and priestess uh, on the left side. Yeah. So this is at Basaki. <laughs> He's a little shy, that guy. I forgot I had yeah. my head shaved there. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, this and this is, is this is how they worship in Bali. They they light incense, they make offerings, uh, they say mantras. This is our driver and his wife. They came with us to the Basaki. That we we made a special trip just with our close Balinese friends. More Bisaki. <laughs> yeah. And this is uh, some friends of ours own this spa. They're Westerners. They have this Toxu spa. And this is their spa. And, uh, Zen. Yeah, it's something. Praise to the Divine Mother. Praise to you, Divine Mother. You have once again made my life a miracle. <laughs> I think that's something Sandra wrote. Yeah. yeah. And this is... Uh, Mother of Immortality, that's from my odes to the Divine Mother. That's a painting I did of the Divine Mother in uh, Australia. More odes to the Divine Mother. Oh, and this is the Temple of Death. We always go there at the end of our stay in Bali and pay our respects. <laughs> you got to go down like 400 steps into the earth. It's way down in the bowels of the earth, and it's where a lot of... Um, uh buddhist kings are buried and they call it uh ganang kawi it's a temple of death and um yeah and that's the the river at the bottom running through this valley and there you go and these are stupas kind of built into the side of the the rock cliff and yeah it's a very beautiful place but very powerful, very, very powerful energy there. When we uh, wrote our book on physical immortality, we went there that year and shaved our head. And we said, well, we want to make sure we've cleared enough of our death urge to put this book out. So we went to the temple of death and shaved our heads. And that was a good ritual to do. Yes, we both went through a lot. Yeah, then we both got sick after that, of course. Your response column comes up. <laughs> yeah, I got bronchitis immediately. Yeah, after this shaving of my head. So this was last year when we were sitting at, these are some of the, I, I presume the tombs where some of the monks are buried. Yeah. see if I can get to these uh, places where we went. Okay, that's Basaki. That's with our group when we went to Basaki. Yeah, more Basaki. That's this priest that uh, takes us around. We've known him for like over 10 years and he's a sweet guy. He has a family there, and uh, we always tour around with him. Okay, so now we're getting into... Uh, this is the Tirta Impal. This is the Immortality Spring, and it's where we go to bathe in the immortal waters. There, That's a good picture of it. There are these fonts and you go in the water and you um, put your head under each font. You go down and you say some prayers um, and you cleanse yourself. And it's very powerful. And Robert Kuhn says this is one of the most powerful sites on the planet for manifesting physical immortality. And all the ley lines you know, you know what ley lines are. There are these energy lines that cross and intertwine around the planet. They all come together in Bali at this place and they're cleansed by this spring. So it's like an infinity sign around the planet and right in the middle where the two sides come together is this spring. So it's a very powerful, a sacred site. And these are some of the people that came with us last year. Okay, now that shows you what you do 
<laughs> at the spring. You cleanse yourself. You put your uh, head under the font. Then you go to the next font. Say a prayer. Go to the next font. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this is Bali. And we're right in there with all the Balinese people too. You know, they're, we're right with them. So those are some of the highlights of the Bali quest. And um, we hope some of you will be inspired to come with us this year. Yeah, and you can write to us if you have any concerns or questions. We're happy to have a call with you. I think uh, Risa and I spoke quite a lot for about an hour about Bali and and she got clear to come. So uh, if you have any questions, we're, we're here for you. All right, so that is our Bali quest. I want to just say about Bali, it's like, what's the value of going on these quote unquote pilgrimages to sacred places? Is it, it takes you out of your normal environment, uh, your routine and gives you space. You know, it just gives you space to be who you are as God created you, you know, not that you can't be wherever you are. But when you're uh, removed from all your routines and all your external responsibilities and all of your, you know, habits, so to speak, you can really go deeper within and you can find that place where you have the clarity, you know, to... Um, I don't want to say restructure your life, but it gives you insight and clarity for your future that you can implement uh, something new that maybe you haven't thought of, maybe you haven't been practicing. And when you give yourself that space, uh, common terminology is a retreat. You know, you go on a retreat from your everyday life uh, to a very beautiful and sacred place, you can receive a lot of insight, a lot of new ideas, a lot of new energy, a lot of um, new relationships. You meet with other people on the quest. And these are very valuable spiritual uh, boosts. You know, they kind of boost your, your spiritual evolution. And this is why we do three or four quests a year. First of all, we do them for ourselves so that we can keep ascending and we can keep going up. But we also do it as service to others so that they can experience some of these, um, you know, powerful energies, high energies themselves. And we have it down so we know how to make that as easy as possible and take you to the highest spots right? And you don't have to learn all of that stuff. It took us years to be able to figure some of these things out, right? And we've got it all down to, you know, a very good uh, science almost. And we can take you to these high spots right off the bat. And you can be assured that you're going to have these um, elevated experiences. So this is why we go to Bali. This is why we go to India in the spring um, for these spiritual quests that we can make our evolution, our inner evolution, much faster. They're, they're like a, a springboard, a booster, a booster rocket. You know, <laughs> it's like a booster rocket to uh, your higher self and it cuts a lot of time. So we recommend that you uh, consider coming with us. Yeah. All right. Well, Bali Baba Ki Jai, that's our, that's our Bali quest. And I hope you enjoyed some of those slides.